Uncle Roland's Pleasure Place. Episode 13 You will remember Deborah and Derek had entered Uncle Roland's farm in Uncle Roland's Pleasure Place. And the farmer's wife was screaming at Harold. But who was Harold and why were the children and the cows so frightened? You are about to find out. (laughs) Harold, stop it! Stop it, stop it, stop it! The farmer's wife was waving her knitting needles. Stop it! You're frightening everyone. (laughs) Harold stopped in front of the children. Have you got any chalk chalks? Harold needs a big voice because Harold has a big mouth because Harold is very big. I won't ask again. Have you got any chalk? No, said Derek, stepping back. No, said Deborah, moving behind Derek. Now you might be wondering who Harold is. Harold is a cow catcher. Now if you have never heard of a cow catcher, you have never seen a cow catcher. I know this because cow catchers only live in Uncle Roland's pleasure place. (laughs) So I had better tell you what a cow catcher looks like. First of all, They don't have any loudspeakers where their horns should be like cows. They have tickling sticks because cow catchers do just that. They catch cows. They catch the cows that get out of the cow field. And with their tickling sticks, they tickle the cows on their bottoms until they go back into the field. And now you have to imagine this because you will never have seen anything like it. At the end of its nose, the cow catcher has a propeller. Yes, a propeller, just like an aeroplane. Why have you got a propeller on the end of your nose? asked Derek. In case I have to fly a long way to find the cows. Harold was looking the children up and down. Ha! Ha ha! The farmer's wife started to knit again. That's a laugh, she said. Harold is frightened of flying, so he only uses his propeller to cut the grass. Why haven't you got any chalk chalks? That was the sound of Harold giving his propeller a spin. Because we have just come from the talking orchard, said Deborah. Well, I don't like children who don't have any chalk chalks. And then do you know what Harold did? Harold stuck out his tongue at the children, which is a very rude thing to do. Oh, no. Harold was shaking his head. I shouldn't have put my tongue out at the children. No, said Deborah, you shouldn't. So now I have to take myself off to the nookie hole. Off you go to the nookie hole with a roar and a spin of his propeller. (laughs) Harold stamped off to the nookie hole. Come on, said a cow, let's dance. The cows switched on their loudspeakers, but Derek was looking up at the sky. You know, he said, it's going to get dark soon. Now, how did Derek know that? There were no clocks in the sky, just a few clouds, but Derek knew that the sun was beginning to go down. In the morning, the sun comes up into the sky, then it crosses the sky during the day, and in the evening, it slowly sinks out of the sky, and then it gets dark. And that's when everyone 
including animals, go to sleep. Can you imagine what would happen if the sun did not go down and it never got dark? Everyone would have to have two breakfasts, two dinners and two suppers and everyone would get fat and heavy and fall off the earth. And if the sun did not go down, people would not go to sleep and would not stop talking to each other and so would wear out their voices and their ears. But the sun does go down, so none of that happens. And Derek realised that with the sun going down, it should begin to get dark. And everyone has to leave Uncle Roland's pleasure place <laughs> before it gets dark. So we can't dance with the cows again. Deborah was already beginning to tap her feet. No, said Derek, we must get on. They left the cows dancing in their field and walked down a sloping path. Now a sloping path is a path that leads down the side of a hill and at the bottom of the hill was something that most farms have, a duck pond. With ducks swimming happily around in the water. But like everything else in Uncle Roland's pleasure place, the ducks were different to any other ducks you have seen. These ducks were biggies. When Deborah and Derek were beside them, the ducks were bigger than the children. Here, you ready? A frog had popped its head out of the water. Ready for what? asked Deborah. A ride. The frog rolled on its back and blew a big water bubble out of its mouth. A ride? On what? Deborah looked around. There were no boats on the pond. A ride on a duck, of course, said the frog. And then the frog did something very cheeky. It jumped out of the water, and you know where it landed? It landed on Derek's shoulder. <coughs> Boris, the frog shouted. A big brown duck with a yellow beak and brown eyes looked at them. The duck squawked and began to swim towards them. Elizabeth, the frog yelled. Now another duck with a yellow beak and blue eyes turned towards them. Boris and Elizabeth are going to take you for a ride. The ducks were talking to the frog. Now you may think every time the ducks squawk it sounds the same, but that's because you aren't a duck and don't speak duck. Now I cannot teach you to speak duck for two reasons. It would take much too long because duck is a very long language and has an awful lot of squawks in it. And also because I don't speak duck. And I don't speak duck because I was never taught duck at school. So if you want to speak duck, you must go to your teacher and say, please teacher, could you teach me to speak duck? But the children were just climbing on the backs of the great big ducks. Derek was sitting on Boris's back and was holding on very tightly to its neck with the talking frog still on his shoulder. The frog was giving instructions to the duck in duck talk and slowly the duck started to swim around the duck pond. Deborah's duck Elizabeth followed just as slowly. Can't they swim a bit faster, said Derek. This is a bit boring. If the duck swims fast, they fly, said the frog. And it's true. When you see ducks suddenly start to swim fast, they are always splash along until they're in the air. What is that little island? asked Deborah. And what's that pink house in the middle of the island? asked Derek. That's Five Cents Island, said the frog. And the pink house in the middle has been built for children to eat. A house for children to eat? The children grinned with pleasure and surprise. I've never eaten a house. What does it taste of? asked Deborah. It's a very strange house because when you eat it, it tastes of whatever you want it to taste of, said the frog. That's wonderful. Does it taste of chocolate? Deborah couldn't take her eyes off the little house. Or Christmas pudding? Derek was already licking his lips. Whatever taste you want, the frog blew another bubble. I've got five senses, said Derek. So have I, said Deborah. So we can go to the island, said the frog. The frog gave the duck instructions and very slowly it swam out to the island. With a big hop, 
it flopped out of the pond and onto the land. But between the children and the little house were four white tents. You have to go into each tent, said the frog, because you have to show that you really do have five senses. The children slid off the back of the ducks and walked into the first tent. In the middle of the tent there was a man standing on a stool. The children stood in front of the man. His lips were moving as he was speaking, but there was no sound coming out of his mouth. Deborah looked at Derek and Derek looked at Deborah. I can't hear what he's saying, said Deborah. Neither can I, said Derek. The man looked at them and started to speak, but without any sound. Derek moved closer to the man. What are you saying, he asked. I'm testing your ears, said the man, to see if you can hear what I'm saying. But you weren't saying anything, said Derek. Exactly, said the man. But if you're not saying anything, how can you test our hearing? If I don't say anything, it means you can't hear anything, said the man. That's true, said Derek. And now I am speaking and you can hear what I'm saying. That's true, said Deborah. So if you can't hear anything when there's nothing to hear, and when you can hear speaking when I speak, then your ears must be working all right. That's a bit potty, said Deborah. Everything in Uncle Roland's pleasure park <coughs> is potty, replied Derek. Do you know what potty means? It means something is a little bit silly. Not a lot, just silly silly. So it's called potty, because potty sounds a silly word as well, doesn't it? I am satisfied that your ears are working and you can hear what you're eating, so you can go to the next tent, the man smiled. Do you listen to what your food says when you're eating it, Deborah asked, as she walked towards the next tent with Derek. Of course not. Derek looked at Deborah. Food doesn't talk. I think you're a bit potty as well. When the flap closed behind them in the next tent, it was black, 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 so black, Deborah could not even see the end of her nose. So, Deborah and Derek, the voice came from above them. Tell me what you can see. Nothing, said Derek. Nothing, said Deborah. Excellent, said the voice. Now watch. Slowly, lights came on, getting brighter and brighter, and the children could see everything inside the tent. Now what can you see, said the voice. The tent was empty. But there's nothing to see, said Deborah. The moment the music started, from the floor of the tent, worms started to pop out and sway in time with the music. Deborah stepped back. She did not like worms. Now, how many worms can you see, said the voice. Did you count those pops when the worms popped out of the floor? Let's get them to pop out again. Now, you can tell me how many worms a children can see, can't you? Yes, there were six pops, so there must be six worms, Derek said. And I can see six worms. Only six, said the voice. Another worm had popped out. Ah, that will be Arnold. He is the worm that is always late, said the voice. So now we can see seven worms, said Deborah. Excellent, said the voice. And how many of them are smiling? They can't smile, they don't have mouths. Derek thought this voice was as stupid as the first. And how many are winking? They don't have eyes, snapped Deborah. Excellent, the voice sounded pleased. Now I know you can see properly. Off you go to the next tent. It's time to leave, it's time to leave. Don't go too far, don't go too far. Charlie's waiting in his car. Charlie's waiting in his car. The moment they had opened the tent flap, they saw the Grinsters, winking and smiling. It's time to leave, it's time to leave. Don't go too far, don't go too far. Charlie's waiting in his car. Charlie's waiting in his car. It's not that late, said Derek, looking up at the sky. Do you know how Derek knew what time it was by looking up at the sky? The sun can tell you what time it is. In the morning when it's getting light, it's because the sun is coming up and it's time to have your breakfast. When you look up and the sun is straight above you, the time is midday, so it's time to have your lunch. 
and when the sun is going down it means it will soon get dark and time to go to bed and leave Uncle Roland's pleasure place. <laughs> Although the sun was getting low in the sky, it was not beginning to get dark. And as he wanted a taste of the pink house, he opened the flap of the third tent and went in with Deborah. Pooh! yelled Derek. What a lovely smell, said Deborah. It stinks in here. Derek held his nose. You always have to hold your nose and squeeze it tight when there is a bad smell around st to stop yourself smelling it. Hmm, from where I'm standing, it smells really lovely. Deborah took a deep breath and smiled. You come to my side of the tent and have a sniff, said Derek. Ooh, now Deborah was holding her nose next to Derek. It smells awful on this side. Wow, Derek had moved to where Deborah had been standing. You're right, it smells lovely just here. What's that noise? Deborah listened to the sound which was coming from all around them. It's someone pouring coffee, Derek sniffed. You can smell it. And that's someone chopping onions. Pooh, you can certainly smell them, said Deborah. Now what's that noise? I know that smell, said Deborah. The children walked around the tent with their noses pointing upwards. Got it. Deborah took an even deeper breath. Derek shook his head as he sniffed in three huge sniffs. I've smelt it, but I just can't remember what it is, he moaned. Coconuts. That's someone banging coconuts together. Oh, yes, said Derek. That's exactly what I can smell. And outside you pass the test. Your smelling really is the best. Come outside you pass the test. Your smelling really is the best. The Grinsters were singing at the entrance to the tent, ready to lead them to the last test. They've tested our eyes and our ears, said Deborah. Yes, and our smell. So this tent must be to test our touch. Derek opened the flap of the tent and the children went in. The sound was all around them. It was not a very nice sound. Very deep, very, very deep. Deborah moved closer to Derek and took hold of his hand. I don't like this. Deborah turned and pulled the tent flap to go out. But it's locked, it won't open. She pulled harder and harder. The sound was getting louder and louder. And louder and louder. Deborah grabbed Derek and Derek grabbed Deborah. The children were now holding each other tightly as the sound increased. And as the sound increased, they held each other even tighter. Something's going to happen, Derek shouted. As the sound reached its height, it popped. Well done. The sound changed to a robot voice. The children stood quite still, still clutching each other tightly. When you were frightened, you held each other tightly. So now you know how to touch and feel. Well done. Go now and test your taste. The flap of the tent cracked open. The children let go of each other. I did not like that, said Deborah. Neither did I, said Derek. The children stepped outside the tent quickly, in case the horrible noise started again. But there's no tent to test our taste. Derek looked around, wondering which way to go. That's what the red house is for, to test your taste. The frog was swimming on its back in the duck pond and raised one of its long legs, pointing it in the direction of the little house. Right, let's go, said Deborah. The thought of eating a house was really funny. Houses are for living in, not eating. If she ate her house, she would not have anywhere to live, would she? The front door of the house was green. Cabbages are green. I bet that tastes of cabbage, said Derek. A piece of the green door broke off easily in his hand. You're not going to eat a piece of door, are you? Deborah laughed. Why not? Derek took a small bite of the piece of door he was holding. Cabbage. His eyes opened wide. The door tasted of cabbage. Deborah took a piece of the door and nibbled just a corner. It does taste of cabbage, she said, but she pulled a face. She did not like cabbage. The walls are red. Deborah took a piece out of the wall. I bet they taste of tomatoes. 
she took a big bite of the wall. Yes, she cried, it tastes of juicy tomatoes. I think if something is coloured red, it tastes of radishes, because radishes are red. Derek pulled a piece off the wall and popped it in his mouth. It does taste of radishes. Derek liked radishes and ate another piece. No, said Deborah, for me, the wall tastes of tomatoes. It tastes of radishes, Derek insisted. It tastes of tomatoes. Deborah was getting annoyed with Derek. Radishes, tomatoes, radishes, tomatoes. Whoa, cried the frog. The house tastes of what you want it to taste. I bet that tastes of ice cream. Derek broke a piece off the window and popped it into his mouth. Yes, it's ice cream, he laughed. Deborah took a piece of the window as well. Thoughtfully, she chewed it for a moment. No, she said. It tastes of white chocolate. It's cream, shouted Derek. It's chocolate, Deborah cried. It's cream, chocolate, cream, chocolate. Stop it! Now Charlie was shouting at them from the other side of the pond. Stop arguing! It's getting late, it's getting late in Uncle Roland's pleasure place, in Uncle Roland's pleasure place. The Grinsters were flying around them excitedly. Charlie was hopping up and down beside his car. You've got to leave, it's nearly dark, he shouted. Bamboozled, bamboozled, if you're not gone before we close, you will be bamboozled. The Grinsters were not smiling this time, and Charlie was waving his arm in the air furiously. Everyone seems worried, Derek said. <laughs> Even the duck, said Deborah, we'd better go. They climbed on their ducks who took them back to Charlie on the side of the pond. Forbidden! It's absolutely forbidden! Charlie was now jumping up and down. For any children to be in the pleasure place when it closes. If we don't get you out before the place shuts, you will be bamboozled. What is being bamboozled? asked Deborah. What is being bamboozled? asked Derek. Oh no, said Charlie. You don't want to be bamboozled. Ah. Will the children get out before Uncle Roland's pleasure place closes or will they be bamboozled? Because no one wants to be bamboozled. Listen to the next episode of Uncle Roland's Pleasure Place.